Did you know that some of the world's most powerful leaders, thinkers and creators share a hidden secret? It's not wealth, fame or luck. It's the ancient wisdom of Stoicism. The best piece of advice I've ever heard came from philosophers like Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, who taught that the key to a fulfilling life isn't found in external achievements, but within our own minds and actions. Imagine being able to stay calm in chaos, find peace in uncertainty, and focus only on what you can control. If you want to unlock this kind of inner strength and resilience, you need to understand the stoic principles that have stood the test of time. In this journey, we'll explore how to live fully in the present, let go of future anxieties, and take meaningful action every day, just as the Stoics did. Stay with us as we dive into each lesson and uncover how these timeless insights can transform your life, helping you to conquer challenges, overcome distractions, and ultimately live with wisdom and purpose. Let's get started. Number one, be at war with your vices. Benjamin Franklin's wisdom. Imagine living in a world where every morning you're given the chance to become just a little bit better. That's the life that Benjamin Franklin pursued, dedicated to a principle of constant improvement and tackling his vices head on. Can you imagine what it would be like to feel that driven, waking up each day knowing there's a chance to refine yourself? Franklin's approach wasn't just about moral improvement, it was his way of crafting a fulfilling life, one vice conquered at a time. He kept a daily journal to track his progress, listing virtues he aimed to embody and vices he wanted to eliminate. It was this constant, deliberate self-assessment that allowed him to lead a life of purpose. When we talk about war with your vices, it sounds like a battle, a constant struggle, and in some ways, it is. But it's also an invitation to grow, to leave behind habits that no longer serve us. Franklin believed in embracing our potential while facing our weaknesses, honestly. Think about it, everyone has vices. Whether it's procrastination, anger or self-doubt, these vices are often lurking, sometimes even disguised as things we enjoy. Franklin's wisdom here invites us to step into the discomfort of recognizing our own shortcomings and making an active commitment to rise above them. It's a process of self-discovery where each victory over a vice becomes a milestone toward personal freedom. Looking back at Franklin's life is almost like peering into the soul of a man who understood the core of human struggle. In his day, distractions were far fewer than they are today. He didn't contend with screens, notifications, or the endless barrage of social media. Yet, his resolve to overcome his own failings is something we can all relate to. In our current world, the battle against vices is more challenging. Temptations are everywhere. Whether it's the temptation to scroll endlessly, binge watch, or avoid responsibilities, Franklin's battle against his vices mirrors the challenges we face today. And here's the curiosity kicker, what vices do you carry, and how would it feel to face them, like Franklin, every single day? Number 2. Finding Peace in a Divided World Imagine this, you're sitting by a quiet lake, a gentle breeze brushes your skin, and for a moment, the noise of the world fades away. You feel at peace. Now, bring yourself back to reality, where the constant buzzing of opinions, the clamor of conflict, and the swirl of debates never seem to stop. Finding peace in a divided world can feel impossible, but what if we could take that lake scene, that serenity, and make it part of our daily lives? Throughout history, people have searched for peace amid chaos. It's what many philosophers, like Marcus Aurelius, dedicated their lives to understanding how to remain unshaken and calm even when surrounded by turmoil. To find true peace, we need to look inward, not outward. The world has always been divided in some way. Humans have different perspectives, beliefs and values. Marcus Aurelius knew this. 
and he spent much of his time learning to master his reactions rather than trying to change the world around him. When we focus on managing our own inner response, we begin to cultivate a kind of peace that isn't dependent on the outside world. Think of it as creating an inner sanctuary. No matter what's happening outside, you can return to that place of calm. It's like carrying that lake scene with you everywhere you go. Reflecting on this search for peace may remind you of times when you felt overwhelmed by the world. Maybe it was during a particularly difficult phase in life when everything felt like a struggle and peace seemed unattainable. Or perhaps you felt this way when witnessing conflicts in society, political divides, social disagreements, or even personal arguments. These experiences can be draining, but the curiosity lies in realizing that peace isn't found by changing the world, but by altering how we respond to it. Imagine, just for a moment, a world where everyone sought peace within themselves first. How would that change our interactions, our communities, our entire society? This is the power of finding peace in a divided world. Number three, the path of gradual improvement. Picture yourself standing at the bottom of a mountain, looking up at the peak. It's daunting, maybe even overwhelming. You might wonder how you'll ever reach the top, but then you take that first step, and then the next. Gradual improvement is just like climbing that mountain. It's not about making one giant leap, but rather taking one step at a time. This is how true progress happens, not overnight, but with steady, intentional effort. Gradual improvement is not glamorous. It doesn't have the instant gratification of quick fixes or overnight success. But it's the kind of growth that lasts, the kind that shapes character. The concept of gradual improvement is something that resonates deeply with us because we live in a world obsessed with instant results. From diet fads promising quick weight loss to get-rich-quick schemes, the idea of gradual progress often feels too slow. But think about anything meaningful you've achieved in your life, whether it's learning a skill, building a relationship, or growing in your career, all of it took time. This process of slow but steady growth allows you to build a foundation, to create something sustainable. In this way, each small victory becomes a building block for something greater. Remember a time in your life when you took on a big project or learned something new. You probably didn't master it immediately. Maybe it was learning to play an instrument, starting a new job, or even working on your health. The beginning was hard, full of doubts and maybe even setbacks. But over time, each effort began to add up, and eventually you looked back and realized just how far you had come. This nostalgia is a reminder of the rewards of gradual improvement. And here's where curiosity kicks in. What if we approached every area of our lives with this mindset? What if, instead of being discouraged by the journey ahead, we focused on one step at a time, knowing that each small improvement is a step closer to our goals. Imagine the mountains we could climb with this kind of patience and resilience. Number four, the power of present moment. Living Seneca's insight. Imagine yourself fully immersed in a moment, a sunset casting vibrant colors across the sky, the gentle rhythm of waves crashing against the shore, the laughter of loved ones filling the air. In these rare, cherished moments, nothing else exists. It's just you and the experience, fully alive and connected to what is happening right now. This is the essence of present moment living, a state of being that the Roman philosopher Seneca emphasized as a path to genuine happiness and inner peace. Seneca believed that life is made up of these present moments and that our true power lies in experiencing them fully. Seneca's insights into living in the present were rooted in his belief that our minds often dwell in the past or worry about the future, leaving us unable to appreciate the now. He famously said, 
True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. When you think about it, the past is gone and the future isn't here yet. All we have is this very moment. But it's easy to overlook, especially in a world filled with distractions and pressures. Seneca challenges us to break free from the cycle of regrets about the past and anxieties about what's to come. Instead, he urges us to focus on what we can control, the present moment, allowing us to experience life more deeply. Think back to a time when you were completely absorbed in a moment. Maybe it was a special family gathering, a peaceful hike, or even just a quiet afternoon at home. These memories stick with us because they were lived fully, without distractions or worries pulling us away. Seneca's teachings remind us that these moments are what make life meaningful. They're rare because so often we're preoccupied with things that don't truly matter. The curiosity here is how much of our lives we spend missing the present due to our minds wandering elsewhere. What would happen if we followed Seneca's wisdom and committed to truly living in the present, seeing each moment as an irreplaceable part of life? Number 5. Overcoming Future Anxiety with Marcus Aurelius Imagine if you could approach every challenge, every uncertain future event, with calm confidence. Instead of worry, there would be clarity instead of fear, strength. This is the essence of Marcus Aurelius's wisdom on overcoming future anxiety. He was no stranger to the pressure of responsibility or the unknown. After all, as a Roman emperor, he faced decisions that affected millions. But through his reflections captured in meditations, Marcus teaches us the importance of focusing only on what we can control in the face of future uncertainties, allowing us to let go of what we cannot. Marcus Aurelius's philosophy centers on the belief that worry doesn't change the future. It only steals peace from the present. He reminds us that the future is unknowable and that it's foolish to let fear of the unknown dictate our lives. Instead, he encourages us to focus on our actions today, our responses and the choices that align with our values. By preparing our minds to respond with courage, resilience and integrity, we can face whatever comes our way without succumbing to anxiety. This is not just a philosophical idea, it's a practical approach to daily living, a mindset that helps us handle life's curveballs with grace. Reflecting on this, think of moments when worry about the future held you back. Maybe it was fear of a job interview, concern about a relationship, or anxiety about an important decision. Now imagine how different things might have been if you had approached it with Marcus's calm acceptance, focusing only on what you could control. This curiosity raises the question, how much energy would we save? and how much happiness could we gain by letting go of future anxieties and trusting in our ability to handle life as it comes. Number 6. The Balance Between Presence and Preparation There's a certain beauty in balance, isn't there? Think of a tightrope walker, perfectly poised between two points, embracing each step with caution, but also moving forward with confidence. In life, we're often asked to find a similar balance between living in the moment and preparing for what's ahead. While living in the present brings peace, preparation gives us security. The challenge lies in not letting one overshadow the other. It's easy to get lost in planning for tomorrow, but it's equally easy to get swept away in the present without laying a foundation for the future. This delicate balance is something philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius understood deeply. They taught that life requires us to be fully present in each moment, yet also mindful of what lies ahead. Preparation isn't about fear, it's about wisdom. It's the understanding that while we focus on today, we also need to sow seeds for tomorrow. Imagine being a gardener who waters plants daily, but also plans for the next season. That's the beauty of finding harmony between presence and preparation. 
It's about being rooted in the now, with a steady gaze on the horizon. Nostalgia often brings us back to moments where we might have been too focused on either the present or the future. Perhaps there were times when we were so wrapped up in planning that we missed out on life's simple joys, or maybe there were periods when we lived only for the moment, only to find ourselves unprepared when challenges arose. This balance invites curiosity what would our lives look like if we could live in the present, while also planting seeds for a fulfilling future. It's a question that invites us to harmonize our desires for peace and security. Number 7. Freedom Through Acceptance Epictetus's message Imagine being free from the heavy chains of expectation, no longer burdened by what you think life should be, but instead fully accepting it as it is. This is the freedom that Epictetus, a former slave-turned-philosopher, sought to impart. Epictetus taught that true freedom comes from accepting life as it unfolds, embracing both its challenges and joys. When we fight against reality, we suffer, but when we accept it, we find peace. Epictetus believed that our suffering often arises from resisting what we cannot change. For example, we might wish for certain outcomes, cling to specific desires, or resent situations beyond our control. However, Epictetus emphasized that our only power lies in our response. By accepting life's unpredictability and choosing how we react, we free ourselves from disappointment and frustration. This isn't about giving up or being passive. It's about aligning with reality and embracing our inner strength to handle whatever comes. When we reflect on this message, it resonates with times when we struggled against life circumstances. Think of moments when you wished things were different, only to realize that fighting the situation made it worse. Epictetus's wisdom invites us to see these experiences as part of life's journey, guiding us toward resilience and acceptance. And here's where curiosity emerges. What would it be like to live free of expectations, meeting each day with openness and responding to life with strength instead of resistance? Number 8. Conquering Yourself Zeno's Path to Power Imagine a power so profound that it doesn't come from controlling others or owning things, but from mastering your own thoughts and emotions. This is the path that Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, envisioned. To Zeno, true power meant conquering oneself, not by eliminating desires or emotions, but by understanding and guiding them. By mastering ourselves, we become unshakable, resilient in the face of life's storms. This isn't a distant, unattainable goal. It's a process of self-discovery, a journey inward. Zeno's philosophy teaches that true power lies in our response to life. Instead of reacting impulsively to events, we can train ourselves to respond thoughtfully. It's about recognizing that while we can't control everything that happens to us, we can control how we interpret and react to those events. Conquering oneself is the ultimate victory, and it's a journey that requires courage, patience, and consistency. Looking back on life, many of us can recall times when we let emotions drive our actions, often to our detriment. Perhaps there were moments when anger, fear, or envy took control, leading to choices we later regretted. Zeno's path invites us to see these moments as opportunities to grow, to practice self-mastery and reclaim our inner power. The curiosity here is powerful. What would our lives look like if we mastered our inner world, responding to life's challenges with calm strength instead of reactive emotion? Number 9. Disregarding the uncontrollable. Imagine waking up each day with a clear sense of peace, knowing that no matter what happens, you won't be shaken. This sense of calm is what comes from learning to disregard what we can't control. In a world filled with uncertainties, the ability to focus only on what's within our power is transformative. 
It's a philosophy that Stoics, like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius championed, teaching us that peace comes from recognizing the limits of our control. At its core, disregarding the uncontrollable is about freeing ourselves from the stress and worry that often accompany life's uncertainties. When we cling to things outside our control, whether it's other people's opinions, unexpected events or societal pressures, we invite suffering. The Stoics remind us that our energy is best spent on our own actions, thoughts and attitudes, rather than on outcomes we can't predict or alter. By focusing on what's within our reach, we become more effective and at peace with whatever happens. Reflecting on this concept brings us back to times when we worried excessively about things we couldn't change. Maybe it was a situation at work, a relationship issue, or a future event. In hindsight, we often realize that our worry did little to help. The curiosity lies in this question, what if we could let go of everything beyond our control, focusing only on what we can influence? It's an invitation to live with greater ease and purpose. Number 10. Progress. Through action, Epictetus's law. Imagine having a vision for the life you want, and each day you take steps toward it. Epictetus, known for his emphasis on action, believed that personal growth and fulfillment are achieved not just by thinking, but by doing. He argued that progress comes through consistent, purposeful actions aligned with our values. Each day, each choice becomes a building block for the life we envision. Epictetus's message is clear, if we want change, we must act. Epictetus's approach emphasizes that we hold the power to shape our lives through small, deliberate actions. Whether it's building a habit, learning a skill, or strengthening relationships, progress requires commitment. It's easy to get lost in dreaming or planning, but true transformation happens through action. This philosophy encourages us to embrace challenges and failures as part of the journey, reminding us that each step we take is a testament to our commitment to growth. In reflecting on this, we might recall times when we wished for change, but hesitated to act. Perhaps we let fear, doubt or procrastination hold us back. Epictetus's law of action urges us to overcome these barriers, embracing each day as an opportunity to move forward. The curiosity that arises here is profound. What if we truly committed to action, using each choice to build the life we desire? It's a question that challenges us to become active participants in our own lives. Number 11. Living Wisdom. Applying philosophy to everyday life. Imagine infusing wisdom into every moment, seeing life not just as a series of events, but as an opportunity to live with purpose and clarity. Living wisdom is about more than knowing. It's about applying philosophical principles to daily decisions and challenges. When we embrace wisdom in this way, life becomes richer, more meaningful. Philosophy becomes a compass, guiding us through life's complexities and helping us to find peace, purpose, and joy. Applying philosophy to everyday life means we begin to see challenges as opportunities for growth. We start viewing relationships, work, and personal goals through the lens of virtue, resilience, and kindness. This approach to life brings consistency and a deeper sense of fulfillment, allowing us to live in alignment with our values. Living wisdom encourages us to approach each day as a chance to embody the principles we admire, becoming kinder, braver, and more thoughtful. Nostalgia often brings us back to moments when we might have drifted from these principles, times when we wished we'd handled things differently. But the beauty of living wisdom is that every day offers a fresh start. The curiosity here is inspiring. How might our lives transform if we fully committed to living with wisdom and intention each day? This question invites us to approach life with an open heart and a curious mind, ready to apply the timeless principles of philosophy in all we do.
As we wrap up this journey through stoic wisdom and self-mastery, remember that each step you take toward these principles isn't just about learning philosophy, it's about transforming how you experience life, handle setbacks, and pursue growth. These timeless ideas have the power to shift your mindset, and by putting them into action, you're not just following ancient advice, you're forging your path to resilience and inner peace. If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments. It shows you're among the 0.01% who are committed to personal growth and actually follow through. And if you're serious about building a stronger, more purposeful life, don't miss out. Hit subscribe and join our community for more powerful insights.